Welcome, welcome. There are two main different categories of people who resist the Lord that I've come to discover. And these are the people who don't think they're good enough to be received by the Lord because of their sins. They think that they need to be a certain way in order to receive the Lord's light. So that's the first group. And then the second group are the ones who, out of their own pride, are very religious and they are highly judgmental on the people that they perceive to be walking out of the Lord's bounds. And they resist the Lord because they unknowingly are actually falling into a doctrine of Satan and they lack discernment to tell the difference between the two. The people in the first category tend to uh, be have this conception that God is all about light. He's all about positivity. Whereas in reality, the Lord actually has a lot of dark stories to tell us in the Bible. There's a group that rejects the Old Testament because they think it's so negative and they don't understand it. They don't understand why the Old Testament even exists. And I, for a brief period of time, fell into this category because this was the narrative being pushed while I was still learning about the Bible. And I didn't see that there was a narrative being pushed. And I unknowingly fell into that category myself. This type of New Age philosophy of rejecting darkness is really a satanic cover-up so the devil can use a sleight-of-hand technique, a wolf in sheep's clothing who masquerades as an angel of light and tell you that darkness doesn't really exist in the whole reality of things. He wants to make it like only the light exists. Only goodness exists. And if we deviate from that knowingness, we are the ones who should be punished. We are the ones out of line. Whereas the Lord actually accepts you in your darkness. In fact, many people who come to the Lord come to the Lord through darkness, like I did. Darkness is something that the Lord uses oftentimes to bring people to Him. The Bible is for, full of stories about people being in darkness, and it's important that we read both the New and the Old Testament. Then you have these Christians who judge everybody. And it's, it's like they reach a certain level of comprehension of the Bible, and they think they're good. And they reject humility towards other people. They get on this high horse where anyone who deviates a slightest bit or that they see as sinning, they automatically cast them into a category. Some of the roughest people, some of the realest people, from what I see, are actually closer to what Jesus has called us to be versus religious people. Because they're just real. They come to God as is. And we have to remember, too, that the Lord put us all here for His divine purpose, not uh, in some kind of conceptual 
uh, thing we need to figure out, but it's he's called us here for us to live our will for him, which is the same as his will for us. And we're not all the same. Some people are roughneck, redneck people who just are not pure people, at least in this point of time. It's not that they're not on the way, but they're just in this period, in this life. This is who they are. And it can be difficult to accept them, but the question is, have they accepted Jesus? Are they on the right path? Because that ultimately is a path of purification, but many people want to judge and think that they are on some higher ground than these people who maybe outwardly have a lot of sin going on. The, the real question is, does one have humility? And what I perceive a lot of time is that the people who are judging lack humility. Otherwise, they wouldn't be so judgmental. Because if you truly have humility, you realize that we all sin. Even if it's in our own thoughts, that can be a sin. Even if we judge people with our own thoughts, that can be a sin. So when one really subjugates their thoughts to Christ, one realizes that there really is love. Love is there, and it's not a judgmental love. It's a very perceptive love, but it's not judgmental. Some of the other best, what I call best, this is my personal opinion, but the the people who I perceive to be really walking with the Lord are those who have been through darkness themselves. They've, they've had either hard lives or hard careers, and they've been subject to a lot of challenges. When one is out there in the world working and striving and being challenged, there's no time to sit back and judge people. It's the people who have a lot of time on their hand and they want to look at everybody else and what they're doing. Those typically are the people who are the most judgmental. The people who are sometimes placed in administration who are trying to come up with rules for everybody else, in reality, their position probably shouldn't even exist. There is this whole administrative state that's gotten out of control in the Western world where people are given these titles without really having to go through the grind to earn these titles. People who achieve true greatness, and you see that greatness within them, how they are, have been through fire. They've had to surrender ego manifestations. They've had to surrender their own faults to the Lord. And they've had to really go through this fire to purify themselves, but it doesn't mean that they're perfect either but they get the essence of what it's about. That's the difference. The religious legalism people who have the bad kind of religious legalism, they don't get the essence. They get the the concept. They understand the knowledge without the wisdom. There's a difference. If a message is being sent and I point to the moon and I say, there's the moon, the person who wants to fixate on the finger and criticize the finger, that is the religious legalism person. And this is a famous saying by Bruce Lee, is if you focus on the finger, 
you will miss all that heavenly glory, which is that beautiful moon out there. So there are lots of people out there who are focused on the finger. This is a main tactic of Satan. He wants you to focus on the finger and miss all that heavenly glory. He does not want you to see what the finger's pointing towards. He wants you to criticize the one who's pointing the finger and try to find fault with them in the way they're pointing and the way the finger looks. This is all a temporal distraction so he can continue his reign on earth. The less people who are woken up on earth, the more the devil dominates everybody. The more power he has, the more darkness there is, the less love, the less cohesion, the less peace, the less prosperity, all good things can all good things have a hard time reigning when the devil has people criticizing people often because of some really small thing. He wants you to focus on the imperfections of others and feel this self-righteous indignation on them instead of looking at what's beyond. The base cause of this is pride, which again is of the devil. Pride is something that these people are covering up and they're covering it up with this fake authority in Christ this fake specialness. Specialness is also a very common block to the Lord. And I think at all time, people struggle with this at some times, especially earlier in life, but it can be later in life too. The fake specialness is a concept. It's a belief about oneself that isn't true. Many people, and I relate this to martial arts sometimes, have this belief that they are secretly these real monsters in the ring. They are super awesome. And yet they haven't really trained that much. And they've never tested their work. But this can be in anything. It doesn't have to be martial arts. Uh, it could be with art. It could be with music. It could be with uh, public speaking. Uh, many people carry around these false beliefs and they think that they are very special, but they haven't tested it. They haven't really truly earned and ironed out their problems, but they haven't earned that merit. They haven't earned the right to know that they have merit in that, but they walk around thinking that. And... It can be the same thing with spirituality. As one who calls themselves a Christian, you know, the Lord, if they don't ever step out into the, the waves and the ocean and wade in that rough water, how are you really going to know? How are you going to have the context to apply what the Lord has told you to apply? We can relate this to Jesus um, when his disciples were in the water. In the water, it was, you know, there was crashing and it was storming and it was scary to them. And yet Jesus was asleep. He was so calm in the water. Many people are afraid to go out into the water and instead they want to sit on the beach and criticize the people who are out in the water doing the thing and tell them that they are not doing it right and try to find legalistic different ways of criticizing them 
when they themselves have never been out in the storm. So you can get a sense of who the real people are, who the real folks are who are not living some kind of conceptual lie of specialness. It's important that we immerse ourselves in the Old Testament also because it is very real. It is history. Much of it is history. When we immerse ourselves in the realness, it just, all the, the BS just kind of floats away. All the fakeness melts away. We start seeing it in its realness. We start seeing the life and death situations that people were in and how primitive it is where just saying the wrong thing to a king, for instance, could, you, could get you killed. Uh, people had to really live sometimes a careful life. The world out there is, is the same today. I mean, we have people who are trying to persecute those for just saying the wrong thing. They can't handle the truth. People that want to sit back in administration who have never had to deal with real life confrontations, those are typically the legalistic people who want to pick at everybody else. And as a, a child of God, it's important for us to even with these people, even with these people, as difficult as it is to still love them. It's not that we love the evil in them. We're called to hate evil. But the person themselves, the way to be a true Christian, from, from what I understand from my journey, is to love people, to love them, sometimes even in their evilness, as difficult as it is. However, doesn't mean we have to accept their behavior. And it doesn't mean we don't have to call them out. Doesn't mean we're not strong in the Lord. Doesn't mean we're not warriors. Being in the vibration of love is a very freeing experience. When we love somebody, we're not resistant. We're also not judging. It's impossible to judge and love at the same time. Judgment blocks the flow. It prevents that energy from expanding. Love is a very expansive vibration. Judgment is very halting. It's a very protective, but it's kind of this false protection. Because in love, we don't fear. Whereas judgment is almost like a fear where you're, you're having to judge them to section that person off. And in essence, we're devaluing them as a person. We're chalking them up to just their behavior and halting that love for them at that point. Now, sometimes we do have to be wise and withdraw our attention from, from evil and from people who are uh, just obstinate people who don't want to learn. You don't want to be casting your pearls before the swine, as Jesus says, because they will trample them underfoot and come to attack you. So we must be wise at the same time and not be a glutton for punishment. There are many out there in today's world who are gluttons for punishment. They have a, in essence, a, a swine in front of them who does not want to learn. They do not want to get better. And they actually hate you for trying to help them. And yet people still try to help them. The Lord did not call us to be imbeciles. He called us to be wise as serpents. When an enemy is operating 
against you and they don't want to be helped, we're not there to force them into help. Sometimes the Lord has to do this work for us. And I can relate this back to a situation in mental health where it was a residential situation where we would give the clients uh, things to use, like toothbrushes and combs and everything else. And some of these people would just go, because they were free, they would just go trash them. And the same people would come back the next day and say, hey, I need a toothbrush. I need toothpaste again. Well, you just gave them the thing. And they didn't value what they were given. And if you told them, hey, we're out, or I can't do that right now, they get very angry. So there is this way to meet a Christian. There is a, and not just a Christian, but someone who's giving. If someone doesn't come to you in gratitude and you reinforce that behavior, you're just setting them up for failure later in life. That same person will go to somebody else and expect something. And it's really that gratitude that opens up the door to receive love. Gratitude and love go hand in hand. We don't want to be giving things to ungrateful people because it's really the giving that is love. It's the generosity. That's the reason why we want to give. And they can't receive that love without gratitude. And there's many, many people who are just given things these days without gratitude and it ruins them. It makes them, or at least contributes to them, being ingrates, where they don't value anything they're given, and so they think that that's the way forward in life, is just to take, which is a major reason we're in some of the situations we're in economically in today's world. We have people who are printing money and just giving it to people who are basically flushing it down the toilet. We really have to come back to a state of gratitude and realize that love and gratitude go hand in hand. We should give to people who are grateful. I've given money sometimes to beggars and it's been one of two types. It's either they're very grateful and I'm glad I, I gave it to him, to them, or they will be like, they'll take it and just be like, okay, what else you got? And they're very ungrateful. And then it, immediately I'm just like, why did I give that to that person? So love and gratitude are really the way. That is the harmony of the universe. There's reception, which is gratitude, and then there's love, which is giving. And when we, when we give through love, that is generosity. Generosity is really the expansion of God's kingdom. But it can only be expanded to those who are grateful. We can't force the Lord on anybody. We can't force love on anybody. It'll only flow into someone who's grateful. So I highly recommend the practice of gratitude and love also. Y'all, that's it for the talk today. Again, don't discount and block oneself to the Lord's love. Um, the Lord will accept a person in their darkness, but he does require the openness because it's hard to uh, come to the Lord if one is not truly humble. Humility is also a form, you could say, of gratitude. Because one is, you can't be grateful without humility. And humility is a receptive attitude. Uh, but it can also be an authoritative attitude too. Um, Humility does not mean one is submissive. 
Um, it's possible to be humble and also in the Lord's authority. Uh, boldness in Christ comes, power comes through humility towards the Lord because the Lord is the ultimate giver of power, of true power, which is in him. Thank you all. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.